So, thank you very much, Stephen, for the introduction, and thank you, everyone, for coming out. It's really uh, very gratifying to see so many people uh, interested and willing to spend a Saturday morning and many days for many people here uh, talking about and thinking about and learning to practice better nutrition. We certainly need you. I think uh, this cartoon, and I don't know who did it, but they did a great job. Uh, I almost could stop my talk right here. This is uh, Dancer talking to Prancer uh, and about all the cookies uh, that uh, would eventually kept up with uh, poor Santa. And in some ways, that does describe where we are. Uh, I, I've been told it's good to start and end a talk with a positive message. So here's my positive message to begin with. And it is pretty, in fact, uh, I think remarkably uh, impressive that uh, the enactment of new standards for f food quality in schools had a very major impact on diet quality of foods available for kids in schools. In just a few years, it, on a scale of 100, it went from about 58 to about 81. Uh, and that's a huge change. It doesn't mean that all the kids ate all the healthy foods, but what's available to them is a first step, and that's uh, the, been a huge step forward. Uh, unfortunately, the, the not so good news is that those standards are being rolled back right during this uh, month by the current administration. Uh, and in between the good news on the beginning and the end, there's a big sandwich of not so good news, unfortunately. Uh, as I mentioned that last night very briefly, uh, rates of uh, cardiovascular disease, and heart, coronary heart disease in particular, had been coming down since the early 1960s. In fact, a huge decrease, about 80% decrease in age-specific cardiovascular and uh, coronary heart disease mortality. But among people now in younger generations, under age 65, that decline has stopped and it's actually starting to creep back up again. And that's a huge problem because that is the number one death still in the United States and worldwide. And while it looks like cancer rates are overall are continuing to come down, uh, again, the picture is very different if we look by birth cohort, in other words, by generation. And there are a half a dozen obesity-related cancers, like colorectal cancer, that again, had been coming down for decades, and now they're on their way back up. And unfortunately, uh, this very strongly predicts is that those, more, those younger generations go through their life cycle, they will carry with them the higher rates of these obesity-related cancers. And we can't say it, uh, for sure all the factors that are driving this, but almost certainly uh, it is the fact that th these are the generations that became obese as children, and now they're moving into the middle age and experiencing the inevitable consequences of that extra weight that they are carrying with them. And <clears throat> all of that is actually resulting in decline in life expectancy in the United States uh, for three years in a row, we've had a decline in life expectancy. Certainly, the, uh, the opioid epidemic has accelerated, that, accelerated that, that decline in life expectancy, but the biggest underlying factor is, again, the obesity epidemic. Uh, and this decline in life expectancy is something that we haven't seen in this country. It's been continued increases. <clears throat> but it's not inevitable, and if you uh, see in this figure, thanks to the economists, uh, Japan has just continually uh, improved their life expectancy. And now there's a six-year gap between the uh, United States and Japan in life expectancy. Uh, that's enormous. You would think this would be setting off alarms in medical schools, in NIH, in uh, Health and Human Services in Washington, but it's not. There's very little attention being paid to this decline in life expectancy. Again, some attention to opioids, but a very little attention to the underlying uh, problem of uh, the obesity epidemic now having impacts on many, many diseases <clears throat> and, uh, and, and life expectancy. 